So I want to talk about a phenomenon known as thin film interference. Thin film interference. Now, let's lay down a couple um, ideas before we get into actual examples of thin film interference. The first one is I want to talk about the speed of light. So you know that the speed of light C is equal to 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second in the vacuum of space and just about the same in air. Now, we have this idea of index of refraction, which is the speed of light C divided by the speed of light in a particular material. And the ratio there gives us N, which we call the index of refraction. Now, I say that to say this. I want to give you an analogy. Let's say that we take a particle of light, maybe we call it a photon, and we're going to liken it to a coin that's flipping from heads to tails to heads and so forth. And the frequency with which we flip from heads to heads is the frequency of the speed of light. A higher energy coin would flip more frequently than a lower energy coin, so it would have a higher frequency. Now the wavelength we would measure would be the distance that the coin travels, moving at some speed, maybe C, the distance the coin travels from one heads to the next. So if we send that coin, starting on heads once again, through a different material, something that is a little more optically dense and would have an index of refraction greater than one, then what's going to happen is we're going to slow the coin down. It's not going to move as fast, but it's still going to rotate as frequently. We're not going to change its frequency. We're going to change its, its speed from C to something other than C. And so what that will do is cause it to move a smaller distance as it goes from heads to heads. So essentially what we've done is we've made its wavelength shorter. So uh, a, a, a wavelength of light moving through a material with an index of refraction greater than one is going to move more slowly and it's going to have a smaller wavelength. And so when, let's say, when uh, V is less than C, we know that the wavelength in some medium with an index of refraction, the wavelength is going to be less than the wavelength of that light in the vacuum of space. And so we can use that to get this relationship, that the wavelength of uh, any type of light in a medium with an index of refraction n is going to be equal to that same wavelength in the vacuum divided by n, the index of refraction of whatever material that we're in. All right, so once we've ironed that out, let's talk about how waves uh, reflect. So let's say we have a, a barrier here, and this is index of refraction 2 at some material, and this is a material with index of refraction of 1, and we have a wave that's coming in, peak, trough, peak, and we arrive here at this barrier, at this interface between two mediums, at a trough. So we'll say this is a heads, that's a tails, there's a heads, this is going to be arriving at a tails. Now if the index of refraction of material 1 is greater than the index of refraction of material 2, then when light is reflected, it's going to be reflected how? How's it going to be reflected? So if this material here is not as optically dense as this, it's going to return in phase, try to make that in phase like it did before. So if it hits on tails, it'll leave on tails. And then heads and tails and heads and tails, and it remains in phase with the incident wave. So the reflected wave is in the same orientation as the incident wave. However, if, let's say, the index of refraction of this first material is less optically dense, has a smaller index of refraction than this material, whatever this is, maybe this is air and this is glass, then what happens is we have a 180 degree phase change. And if we arrive on tails, we leave on heads. And so that we have a wave that leaves then 180 degrees out of phase where now heads meets tails and we would have destructive interference if those were two waves that were interfering with each other. All right, so now that we've laid out those two ideas, let's talk about how thin films behave. So, thin film interference. Let's suppose we have um, three layers of material. Let's say we have air. And so here's our air. And on beneath our air, we have oil. 
and there's our layer of oil. And here we have water, and the oil is floating on top of the water. And let's say we have some light. And our light is going to come down. Like, actually, let's give this first uh, an index of refraction. We'll say that air is uh, 1, say 1 1.0. And oil is going to be, let's say it's 1 point, make it easy, 1.5. And water is going to be 1.33. That's probably about right. So let's say we have some light. And let's say this light is, oh, I don't know, I'm using a blue marker, so something in that realm of, let's say, wavelength in air of oh, 550 nanometers. And that light is going to come down and strike this top surface of the oil where the air meets the oil. Some of that light will be reflected. Some of that light will be transmitted through and instead reflect off the bottom layer of the oil and pass back out. Some of it may also come down in, in, into the water, but we're not going to consider that right now. Now let's look at the orientation of the light. Let's suppose that the light strikes here on heads. So right here at the air-oil interface, we're saying that the coin of light strikes this interface on heads. Well, oil has a greater index of refraction than air, so when it leaves, basically no no time or space has changed, but in the same instant we go from heads to tails. We flipped our coins uh, position by 180 degrees. Now, if we want to know the thin film, uh, regarding thin film interference, if we want to know the minimum, the minimum thickness necessary to get, let's say, total constructive interference. Constructive I'll say abbreviate interference. We want total constructive interference so that we, our eye, our eye is going to be here looking at this light. We want to see this wavelength of light maybe in the blue spectrum. So in order for us to see that, it can't be destructively interfered. It has to be constructively interfered. So how does that happen? Well, we know that when the light leaves this surface back out into the air from the oil, it's going to have to leave on tails so that the light reflected from the top layer and the light reflected from the bottom layer passing through the top layer both reach this same spot on tails so that they are in phase and they will then remain in phase all the way to our eye or whatever detector. So how does that work? Well, let's go down here a little bit and look at the formula that we use to figure out thin film interference. So what we'll say, and remember just like the double slit or the single slit uh, equations, it all comes down to extra path length. Well, what extra path length does this light have to travel that this light doesn't? Well, it's the thickness of the oil film, our thin oil film, but it's not just the thickness once, it has to come back up, it's the thickness twice. And we're also assuming that this light actually comes down and is uh, more or less perpendicular. It's not actually at this angle that we're showing it here, we're just doing that so we can separate our images. So. What we want to say is the extra path length is twice the thickness. We're going to say that this here, this distance is t. So it's going to have to come down a distance t. It's going to have to go back up a distance t. So the formula we use is 2 times t, the extra path length, is going to be some integer or half integer m times the wavelength of light that we're dealing with. So whether or not we get constructive or destructive interference depends on two things. It depends on the wavelength of light that we're using as well as the thickness of our thin film. Now, let's get back to this. So we know that in order for us to get constructive interference, light that travels from here, it remains on heads until it travels through here if it does not reflect. So the transmitted light goes from heads, and let's say this is maybe one whole uh, one half of a wavelength. So from here to here, it would go from heads, it would go, to it would end up on tails down here, and this has a smaller index of refraction than the oil. The water has a smaller index of refraction than the oil, so it does not change phase, so it strikes on tails and it leaves on tails, but uh-oh. If we arrive on heads and we end up on tails here, and we'll change phase the same amount, well that would put us on heads, and well that won't do because that's going to give us destructive interference. So well, at least we figured out what thickness we would need to have. Destructive interference is that twice the thickness would be, twice the thickness would have to be one times the wavelength. But 
that's not what we wanted. We wanted to find out how we would get constructive interference. So let's shorten that by a half a wavelength. What happens, let me cross these out, what happens, and I'll do this in orange, if instead this distance plus this distance add up to not a whole wavelength, but a half a wavelength. So this was one quarter and this was one quarter. Well, if we come in on heads and we go a whole half a wavelength, we would leave on tails, which means that twice the thickness has to equal one half of a wavelength. And so if we wanted to solve for the minimum thickness, what we would do is we'd say t equals lambda over, uh, this is in the denominator, so it'd be four. And now I'm going to bring in n. And why am I going to do that? Well, this lambda here is the wavelength of this light in the air. But we're not in air. This is all happening in oil. So really this lambda is going to be that, which is going to be that over that. So let's start plugging in some numbers here. So this is in the oil. So this is going to be, we said this was 550 nanometers divided by four times the index of refraction of this particular kind of oil. And so let's put this up here. We have the 550 nanometers times 10 to the negative nine divided by four times 1.5. Da, da, da. That gives me this number here. I'm going to write it like this. The thickness is going to be uh, 91.7. I'm going to round 91.7 times 10 to the negative ninth, or the thickness is going to be 91.7 nanometers. So the minimum thickness that we could have in a slick of oil film in order to get constructive interference so that we would see 550 nanometer light appearing above this oil slick. Maybe we're looking at a rainbow of uh, different colors. Right here, the color we would see would be uh, this bluish color, 550 nanometer. Maybe it's a, more of a green color. And in order to do that, we would have to have exactly this thickness, exactly 91.7 nanometers. So just to recap, what we're looking at is how does light behave when it interferes with itself through the thickness of a film? It's kind of a funny way to say that. If light travels here and reflects off because this has a greater index of refraction than that, it arrives on heads, if we give it the analogy of a coin, and it leaves on tails. That light that does pass through has to go up and down and up and down and up and down. And in order for us to leave on tails so that we can have constructive interference, this whole path here has to be a quarter of a wavelength and another quarter so that we change phase by one half wavelength so that we can leave on tails. All right, so that's how we work a thin film interference problem. I hope that helps.